Howdy everyone! Today I'm looking at a very inexpensive lens that's causing quite some excitement among more thrifty photographers. The Yongno 50mm f1.8, which is designed for full-frame or APS-C cameras and costs only about 40 to 50 pounds, about 50 dollars. Yongno are a Chinese company who make very good copies of official Canon and Nikon equipment, among other things, and their off-camera flash guns are particularly good. But this is the first time they've come out with an autofocusing camera lens. This lens is obviously a bit of a rip-off of the extremely popular Canon 50mm f1.8 lens, as you can see here. On the outside, the Yongno lens looks extremely similar. However, on the inside, the Chinese company have come up with their own mechanical and optical design, and most interestingly, it costs only about half the price, as if the original Canon lens wasn't cheap enough. Personally, I don't see why Yongno don't just give the lens their own cosmetic design on the outside, but whatever. During this review, I'll compare the two lenses as much as possible. 50mm f1.8 lenses have always been very popular. Firstly, on a full-frame camera, the focal length of 50mm gives you a very nice emphasis on your subject while still giving you a fairly wide angle. You can get a lot into your picture while still getting a nicely out-of-focus background. If you're using an APS-C camera, however, then the 50mm field of view is a lot tighter, the equivalent of 80mm, making it more useful for portrait photography, compressing your backgrounds. Secondly, a maximum aperture of f1.8 means that this lens can let in a lot of light, and that's useful for shooting indoors or in the dark. It's also useful for getting more out-of-focus backgrounds. For example, here's a shot taken at f5.6, the maximum aperture of many kit lenses. And here's the Yongno lens at f1.8. As you can see, it gives your pictures some real depth. Unsurprisingly, this lens does not have image stabilization. Well, let's look at its build quality. The Yongno lens is a tiny bit larger than its Canon Muse, and both lenses are very light. But the Chinese lens does feel quite solidly made, and it also has some nice rubber trimming around its focus ring, which is missing on the Canon lens. Both lenses have focus rings that are quite loose and not very smooth or precise to turn. Neither lens has full-time manual focusing, so you'll need to turn off autofocus in order to turn that focus ring safely. The front of the lens extends as you change focus, but it doesn't rotate, which is useful for people using polarizing or graduating filters. It has quite a small 52mm filter thread, the same as the Canon lens. Now autofocus. Let's see the Yongno lens in action. And now the Canon lens. Yongno. Canon. Both lenses are driven by micromotors which screech at you in protest while they work. The Canon lens is a little bit faster though. Seeing as Yongno are quite new to manufacturing this kind of equipment, a lot of people may be asking, does this lens focus accurately? My copy of the lens consistently front focused. I needed to micro adjust the autofocus on my Canon 6D to a level of minus 9. And then the lens nailed focus nearly every time. When it comes to lens calibration, individual camera bodies and lenses will vary. You might get a lens that works perfectly on your camera, and you might get a lens that needs some adjustment if your camera actually has that option. I've no idea what the odds are of whether you'll need to make adjustments either way. The main thing, to my mind, is that the lens focuses consistently once you do get it calibrated. Some reviewers on the internet have reported that this lens will not autofocus when using live view mode. With my copy of the lens, that wasn't an issue. Here it is working in live view on a Canon 6D. And here on a Canon 70D. So no problems here. 
A nice improvement in the Yongno lens over the Canon is that it has seven aperture blades instead of the Canon's five. As a result, the Yongno lens has much nicer backgrounds when the aperture is topped down. The Canon lens is infamous for its pentagonal bokeh balls. Some people might be wondering if the lens gives EXIF information. The good news I can tell you is that it does. Certainly helps me with my reviews. The lens comes with front and rear lens caps, but no lens hood, and it's certainly not weather sealed, but it's such an inexpensive lens that you can't really complain. Overall, the Yongno 50mm f1.8 works perfectly fine for a lens that costs so little money. Other reviewers on the internet have had various experiences, but I'm happy to say that my own copy of the lens seemed to function okay. You might need to micro-adjust the autofocus with your camera though, if you can. Okay, now on to picture quality. Again, I've seen mixed reviews of this lens so far, with various reports of its sharpness. Let's compare it to the Canon 50mm f1.8 on a full-frame camera, the 20 megapixel Canon 6D. In-camera corrections are turned off for this test, to be fair on the Yongno lens. I've focused both lenses very carefully. At f1.8 they are both quite sharp in the middle of the image, but I'd give a slight edge to the Canon lens here. Let's look in the corners. Neither lens is good, but the Yongno is much softer than the Canon, and both lenses are very dark. Stop down to f2.8 and the corners brighten up equally, but the Canon retains its sharpness advantage. At f4, the Yongno lens is getting sharper, but it's still way behind the Canon. At f5.6, it's the same story, and at f8, both lenses are sharp, although the Canon still beats the Yongno a little bit. Back in the middle of the image, both lenses look great. You might be able to notice that the Yongno lens has a noticeable magenta color cast, which annoys me slightly. Overall, on a full-frame camera, the Yongno lens is pretty soft in its corners, and it certainly can't beat the Canon lens, itself not being the sharpest lens in the world, but in the middle, image quality is quite good. Well, let's look at the lenses on an APS-C camera, a 20 megapixel Canon 70D. At f1.8, in the middle of the image, again, the Canon lens is considerably sharper, with the Yongno lens being rather soft. The Yongno lens is focused properly here, just to reassure you. In the corners, again, both lenses are soft, but the Yongno fares a lot worse than the Canon. Stop down to f2.8 and the Canon lens is giving a clearer picture now, while the Yongno still struggles away. Stop down to f4, or further down to f5.6, and both lenses become quite sharp, although the Canon retains its advantage. At f8, the Yongno lens reaches its highest levels of sharpness. Back in the middle, both lenses are very sharp. Again, you can see here that the Yongno lens seems to have a noticeable magenta color cast. Well, overall, the Yongno 50mm is a rather soft lens on an APS-C camera, which is a shame, because considering the cost of the lens, it's probably aimed at the APS-C market. And even with the aperture stopped down to f8, the original Canon lens is sharper. Let's look at distortion and vignetting. They are not such an issue on an APS-C camera, so I'll be testing on full frame. I'd say that the Yongno lens has just a touch less distortion than the Canon. However, both lenses have an alarmingly high level of vignetting, showing very dark corners at f1.8. At f2.8, both lenses push that darkness back into the corners and stopped down to f4, the problems are gone. So in terms of vignetting and distortion, both lenses are about as bad as each other, really. Let's look at close-up picture quality. Like most 50mm lenses, the Yongno can focus down to about 45cm, which is not really very close. Close-up picture quality is not as sharp as the Canon lens at f1.8, but it's not too bad. At f2.8, the difference is narrowed down, both lenses being pretty sharp in the middle. Now let's see how the lenses work against bright lights. 
Well, it's a pretty dire showing from both of them, as they display plenty of heavy flaring and a big loss in contrast. Finally, let's see how the lenses render their out-of-focus backgrounds. I was never a fan of the quality of the bokeh on the little Canon lens. The Yongno matches it. Both lenses seem to have identical looking bokeh. Backgrounds look a little bit busy and not very smooth, in my opinion, with highlighting on out-of-focus edges. However, as I've shown you before, the Yongno has nicer bokeh than a Canon when its aperture is topped down. Well, overall, while I'm not impressed with this lens in any way, I am impressed with what Yongno have done. They've come onto the market and made a working, fully electronic camera lens with image quality that's just about usable, and all for under £50. It's not as good as Canon's lens though, so you do get what you pay for here. But the Yongno lens will still yield some nice images for you. One other thing I should mention, I actually wanted to make this review a few months ago, but the first couple of lenses that I ordered off eBay didn't seem to make it over from China, from the various sellers I got them from. I did get refunds for them, thankfully, but still, my experience is that it's not necessarily an easy lens to get hold of. Still, there you have it. It's an interesting entry onto the market for Yongno. You pay your money, you make your choice.